All right, that's my son, first year playing t-ball, and he's been doing extremely well. So the practice that we've put in, we put a little bit of practice ahead of the season, been putting some extra time in during the season, and his mechanics, his swing, it's slowly kind of getting better and better and better. So it's really cool seeing the work that we're putting in paying off and I'm kind of hoping you know the same you know happens for my contest perhaps so I know it's been about a month since I last updated you guys not a lot has happened with the prep um, everything is still going pretty well fat loss still going pretty slow but that's been purposeful um, you know there's been a couple of moments where I've gotten a little impatient um, but I didn't get outside of you know what I wanted to do as far as protocol wise I didn't want to get overly aggressive so I stayed you know patient and basically kept trusting my process and you know over the course of the last month I'm about you know down two and a half pounds um, on the weekly average for the month so the lowest weighing I've seen was 184.9 that was last Friday and definitely was on the flatter side because that came off of five low days um, and then I took you know some refeeds to kind of fill myself back out um, but yeah the scales going down and not that the scale is the the only indicator of progress um, but it is you know a tool that you use that you definitely want to see the scale over time go down but more importantly than the scale visually um, I'm starting to like what I'm seeing I'm starting to to you know resemble the old Jeff um, so that's got me excited and it's got me motivated and that's the thing is like sometimes when you're in that tweener stage and I think I've talked about this in my 2014 prep that tweener stage is kind of where you know you're losing weight and you know when you're you're in your clothes your clothes start to fit a little baggier and you don't feel big anymore you're like man I don't you know I'm losing size like it's mentally you know you're not losing size like true muscle but you're losing like overall girth you know and you just don't have that same confidence because you're not feeling those shirts out and then when you take your shirt off you're kind of like uh, well I look kind of like a skinny fat like you know you're you're you look little leaner but not that muscular and it's it's a it's a rough period to go through it's mentally challenging and I know some people you know when they get to that stage they kind of don't endure it or persevere through it and you know sometimes they quit a prep because they think they're not you know progressing the way they should or whatever and they get they get down on themselves and they kind of quit but if you can push past that and you get out of that tweener stage that's where things get really fun and exciting because then you know the work that you are putting in every single week you can see the visual changes start to happen um, you know a little more clear you know it just, you just have a lot more clarity visually every single week so right now I'm at that point where I kind of busted through that tweener stage and I'm like oh I can actually start to see a little bit of glue oh I can actually see my triceps just a little bit more um, so it's getting more exciting for me and being that I'm you know right around 185 pounds on the average sometimes I'm 186 I'm about 15 pounds from where I truly need to be and uh, you know with the muscle mayhem we're about I think it's 15 weeks out now so pound a week you know you know maybe a pound a week I can get I don't know yet kind of we'll just see how it goes I'm not going to um, rush my process because I'm playing the long game the long game is worlds in November but I do need to qualify for that in muscle mayhem in July 15 weeks from now um, I want to use that as a qualifier and the only the only uh, thing you need to do to qualify for worlds um, from what I know of anyway is that you just have to do a show ahead of time so even if I'm a little bit off, you know, come July at Mayhem, um, I'll be okay with it because it'll give me that qualification. But more importantly, I get to share the the, the experience, you know, the show uh, with my brother from another mer mother, Eric Helms. And the first time that Eric and I met was basically 10 years ago um, at the NGA California. And then we competed again together four weeks later 
at the Muscle Mayhem. So this is kind of like our coming home party, you know. So it's kind of like our 10-year anniversary. It's our 10-year anniversary for 3DMJ. So, um, you know, regardless, like I said, if I'm like at my best or I'm not, um, I'm still going to do it just because I don't want to miss out on that opportunity uh, to share such an awesome experience with Eric as well as with the other 3DMJ crew who will be out here, uh, you know, for the mayhem in July. So I'm definitely, you know, pretty pumped about that. Um, but yeah, so just, you know, I'm slowly getting leaner, you know, again, nothing too exciting about it. I haven't changed, you know, my protocol, you know, on my low days, still averaging about 1900 calories. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, um, you know, cause I am a, a decently sized guy, but again, um, I'm pretty sedentary, sit at my desk here, you know, for the majority of my day. So I'm not that active. I just don't require a lot of calories. Um, so I have to kind of grind it a little bit and you know if if progress does slow a little bit um, you know then I, I have a couple options like okay you're gonna have to you know maybe do more cardio or lower food down maybe a combination of both or hey let's not refeed as often so that's something that I might have to do but for now five low days has worked pretty well um, and on those low days I'm still cranking out about 50 minutes of list cardio in the morning after a cup of coffee I knock that out um, and then I train in the afternoons and then on the weekends is usually you know when I have my two refeeds um, and those refeeds you know they'll they'll vary in size depending on you know what my rate of progress has been like during the week like if I lost quite a bit then um, I can be a little more assertive with those refeeds especially if let's say fatigue is high um, you know let's say I'm not recovering too well from my training sessions or my performance is a little bit down then I'm gonna be a little more assertive uh, with the refeeds because one I could afford to because I had a good rate of progress but what's really important is I want my performance to maintain as high as possible because that is the primary driver for muscle retainment if my performance starts to dip you know week in and week out I can almost guarantee you um, you know I'm gonna look flatter and flatter and flatter so I really you know make it a point to try to balance out like keeping performance as high as possible keeping recovery as high as possible and at the same time trying to get that that rate of loss I'm, I'm looking for you know so it's kind of a balancing act uh, but again what's really kind of nice is again I'm playing that long game so if we're talking this prep is going to all the way till November time is on my side so I, I have a lot more um, pull or you know calls I can make um, my playbook is actually bigger let's say so that's kind of how the, the food level has been as far as macros um, yeah it's a little scary to some people but yeah I usually get around 35 40 grams of fat on my low days um, carbs are in the neighborhood of like 225 sometimes 235 um, and I go as low as 200 if I really want to kind of dig on a specific day uh, and then my protein is is usually right around 160 to 170 that's kind of where it's been floating um, and I know that protein seems low people are gonna go man that's under a gram per pound but if you think of um, you know lean mass like I'm not 185 pounds of lean mass like I would estimate that my lean mass is probably in the high 150s so protein you know 160 to 170 that's a gram per pound of lean mass so you know and again the proof is in the pudding you know when you look at my physique um, muscle mass isn't going anywhere so that's reassuring you know so that doesn't you know freak me out you know when I say oh gosh this guy's only eating you know 160 grams of protein and he weighs 185 pounds um, but yeah so that's kind of uh, you know where those macros kind of ride on those low days refeeds um, you know the fats I try to keep under but of course you know as far as the practicality of it um, I let the fats kind of slide up on the refeeds otherwise I'm gonna be eating up but cardboard on my refeeds and you know I'm not gonna eat rice cakes all day um, so I tend to let my fats kind of venture up a little bit so you know they'll go anywhere between 50 to 70 grams of fat on my refeed days um, carbs are gonna fluctuate between four to six hundred again depending on uh, you know where, where I need my food levels um, based on the factors that I mentioned earlier and then protein I keep it anywhere between one 
160, 180 on those refeed days. Um, and I try not to do cardio on the refeed days. Um, I don't want to, you know, basically do cardio and then the extra food I'm taking in, either fueling it or recovering from it. I just basically want to be chilled on the weekends, you know, not really doing cardio and let that extra food do its thing. Like let it kind of top my glycogen stores back out and help to set up the next week's training. So when I get on the gym on Monday, Tuesday, I'm well fueled and I have some solid workouts. Um, Cause again, I want to basically keep that performance as high as possible to retain as much muscle as possible. So that's kind of how I've been running the diet. Nothing's really changed this entire prep. That's basically how I've been rolling on occasion. Um, I might go with one refeed um, or I'll say, hey, I need three refeeds here. You know, if again, the fatigue levels and all that have really escalated. And if I'm not getting the progress I'm looking for as far as fat loss, then I'll say, okay, let me just take one refeed here or I'll take two, but just make them smaller refeeds. So there's a, there's a lot of, um, um, you know, judgment calls that I make, wiggle room, flexibility, which for me personally, um, that's kind of what helps me, you know, become a, or that's why I should say I'm a, I'm a lifestyle bodybuilder as opposed to this hardcore, you know, you know, bodybuilder that's got to be super, super rigid. Like I've been that bodybuilder in the past and it taught me a lot. It taught me how to grind and, and how to be structured and how to adhere uh, and be disciplined. Um, and that served me well back then. Um, and it's helping me now because at moments I need to, you know, basically do what I used to do in order to kind of facilitate progress at times. But at other times, you know, that can be a detriment as well. So I need to kind of learn how to pull back and be flexible. Um, and I learned those tools, you know, in my 2011 and 2014 preps, you know, flexible dieting. And then 2014, it was flexible dieting as well as flexible training. Like that's where I was becoming a little more flexible in my training in 2014. Um, so, you know, over time I've learned that, okay, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a black or white endeavor here. You know, basically there's, there's a lot of, you know, shades of gray. Um, and you know, there's a lot of tools that I can use, uh, for a job at hand. I don't have to, you know, basically try to use a hammer to fix a sink. You know, I can, okay, let me pull out the plumbing wrench and get the job done right. So that's basically kind of, um, you know, how I've approached, um, you know, this prep with nutrition as well as training. So on the training front, um, it's been going exceptionally well. Um, I've counted up the number of PRs I've hit since uh, I last updated you guys. So about the last month, I've hit 10 PRs. Um, I will say the majority of those PRs are coming on three lifts um, in my floor press, my leg press, and my RDL, those three movements, those are kind of like my bread and butter movements, my bread and butter compound movements. Um, those have been just really flying. So, you know, if my RDL, if I'm, you know, regularly, you know, doing over 400 pounds, just think what that's going to do for my, my glutes, my hamstrings, my lower back. Um, and that's kind of the reason why, you know, you won't be seeing me, you know, doing a shit ton of like accessory work, like, you know, a shit ton of uh, leg curls, just because you know, when I'm doing, you know, RDLs twice a week, you know, 400 plus pounds and, and in those sessions hitting PRs, um, it's really demanding and that musculature is being hit pretty good. So um, I just feel like if I do a lot of accessory work on top of that, um, it's just going to put too much of a burden, too much of a demand. Um, and again, when you're only eating 1900 calories five days out of the week, you kind of have to be very careful of how you balancing out the supply and demand. So you know, that's kind of like uh, the approach with my training, like just really kind of getting after it with the big lifts, um, you know, trying to get the most out of them. Um, and I've been kind of, uh, you know, up and down with my training volume, you know, over the last month. Um, for a while there, I was running like three sets per exercise. Um, but this past week, this week, I've actually increased those compounds a little bit. Um, so I went back to a range, so anywhere between three to five sets for, for the big lifts. Um, on some of the accessories, same thing, three to five. And the way I kind of gauge it is, you know, if I'm able to increase load, let's say, or I'm able to increase reps, um, then I'll kind of just say, you know what, I don't need to, you know, go up to five sets. I'll just stay at three sets because I was able to get the volume through the load or through the reps. If 
I can't, like if I say, I just, okay, I can't push no more load, reps, I can't really push reps, then I might throw in, you know, a set or two to get volume that way um, without creating too much of a demand. So I think if I was to, you know, at this point, let's say, again, with food levels being so low to say, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to do everything at five sets. I'm going to try to increase the load and the reps. Like that can definitely put me in a bad spot. Yeah, you know, with a from a recovery standpoint. So, again, I don't want to, you know, have poor recovery. You know, have unnecessary risk for like aches, pains, injuries. That's what got me into hot water with my 2017, 2018 prep. I was just trying to do too much um, on too little fuel, and it just it wasn't a good recipe. So, again, learned a lot from that prep, and uh, you know it's really kind of paying off for me now um so yeah the the uh i guess the exciting news i could say is that um i got a new toy i got a a uh seated seated row machine or a chest supported row uh valor fitness cb14 if you guys want to check it out um really enjoying that the reason i purchased that um was i wanted to save my lower back even more so in the past i went from like my rack row went to a cd cable row to save my lower back so my rdls could keep flourishing um, but even the cd cable row is noticing that my lower back was feeling it a little bit plus i was sitting on the floor because my low pulley you have to kind of sit on the floor to do it so i was like you know what I'm tired of sitting on the floor i want to save my low back so that way my rdls can keep flourishing um, and it's been a great investment thus far i'm really enjoying it love the way it feels good good range of motion um, so I think that was a great buy for me and the other thing that I did well not that I bought a new toy but a new exercise that I'm doing instead of doing laterals with a plate or laterals with a dumbbell um, I'm doing it on the Smith machine and you probably guys seen the video already um, man my 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 side delts uh, my medial head is like fried like the last two days it's been super sore so i would say it's for me i can tell like soreness is not an indicator of progress but it's definitely an indicator that i targeted the muscle right um and yeah i'm feeling it so those are definitely a keeper so i'm excited about that but other than that i'm gonna keep if i just keep rambling here it's gonna be extremely long video so i'm gonna leave it here things are going really well starting to look more the part which i'm really excited about oh, out of that tweener stage so the next month or two should be pretty exciting so i'll leave it there hope you guys enjoy this one and we'll see you on the next one